We heal as a team. We're gonna crumble. Inch by inch, play by play, till we're finished. We're in hell right now, gentlemen. Believe me. And we can stay here, get the shish kicked out of us, or we can fight our way back, way back, into the light, into the light, into the light. We can climb out of hell, out of hell, out of hell, one inch at a time. You know, when you get old in life, things get taken from. I mean, that's that's part of life. But you only learn that when you start losing stuff. You find out life's as game in inches. So is football. Because in either game, life or football, the margin for error is so small. I mean, one half a step too late or too early, and you don't quite make it. One half second too slow, too fast, you don't quite catch it. The inches we need are everywhere around us. They're in every break of the game, every minute, every second. On this team, we fight for that inch. On this team, we tear ourselves and everyone else around us to pieces for that inch. We claw our fingernails for that inch. Because we know when we add up all those inches, that's going to make the fucking difference between winning. It's the guy who's willing to die who's going to win that itch. And I know if I'm going to have any life anymore, it's because I'm still willing to fight and die for that itch. Because that's what living is. The six inches in front of your face. Now, I can't make you do it. You got to look at the guy next to you. Look into his eyes. Now, I think you're going to see a guy. You're going to see a guy who will sacrifice himself for this team because he knows when it comes down to it, you're going to do the same for him. That's the team, gentlemen. And either we heal now as a team or we will die as individuals. Individual, 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 individual. Ideas are bulletproof. Welcome to the show, guys. It's Friday, July 15th, 2011. This is Down the Rabbit Hole. I'm your host, Popeye, from federaljack.com. Today, I have a special treat for you guys. I'm going to be giving you a hour-long special on nothing else but the Bohemian Grove. Yes, the Elite's Playground in Northern California in the Redwood Forests where they run around in the woods for two weeks and they worship stone owls and they get serviced by male porn stars. They do mock human sacrifices. Some people have even said they do real human sacrifices in those woods. Who knows? I'm going to play you a clip from the cremation of care ceremony itself. It's like about a minute and a half long clip. It's the very end piece of it. And... I'm also going to call CNN live on air, their, their, call, their tip line, and I'm going to try to report the fact that there's the world's elite meeting in the Redwood Forest, and they worship a large stone owl named Molech uh, that is a Babylonian deity that people used to worship and sacrifice children to, amongst others. So we have a, uh, a very packed planned show for you today. First, I'd like to give you a little information about Bohemian Grove if you guys aren't aware of it. A lot of people are uh, that uh, know about the New World Order and stuff, but some people, I'm sure listening, don't know what the Bohemian Grove is and don't know why I would be so fired up about it. So let me explain to you a little bit. Uh, Since 1873, the, the elites of the world have met in the ancient redwood forests in uh Northern California, right uh, north of San Francisco there. And you've had people like Ronald Reagan and Nixon and Eisenhower before they were ever presidents. They went there and then they became presidents. Uh, you have, you know, 
Clinton, you have George Bush Sr., you have George Bush Jr., you know, W. The world's elite go there. The uh, the atom bomb was developed. The you know uh, Oppenheimer was there. He admitted that they had talked about it. I forget the name of the ver- the the very little cabin that it was in, but that the Bushes have their own little cabin. It's it's really creepy. Uh, if you're listening and and you're part of the chat room, I put a link to Alex Jones's movie. Dark Secrets Inside Bohemian Grove. He touches a lot on the stuff that goes on there. You see some secret footage because uh, he had smuggled the pocket cam in there. And uh, that's actually where I was able to get the audio from. And, uh, you know, I'll be able to play you guys some of this sick, twisted stuff. In fact, here, let me... This, this is the cremation of care. This is like the last minute and 36 seconds of the cremation of care ceremony. That's Molek. clap like a bunch of morons yay we just watched the ancient ceremony yay we just watched a mock human sacrifice yay idiots i mean talk about sheep they even have their own brain dead brainwashed morons in their own little cult and if you got to see the the video of the ceremony it's they're out in the middle of the redwood forest there's this 45 foot tall stone owl which it, it wasn't always an owl. Interesting, if you go back and look at older pictures, uh, it used to be a, a, an evil-looking Buddha. It was really creepy. But um, I've seen pictures of inside of it, and it's, it's hollowed out you know, in the basement. And, of course, I'm sure they have a better recording system and audio system now. But they had uh, – it was reel-to-reel inside – and you know there was they had the, the the it hooked up they had all the audio lines and everything they had a mixer board and everything in the basement you know inside the 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 bottom of this thing and that's where they would run this reel to reel recording of Walter Cronkite speaking as Molech the voice of the owl and it's just this whole long ceremony and they they burn an uh, a, an effigy of a human being. You know, uh, and they play during the the burning of it. They play the the mock, um, the scream of uh, a uh, uh, someone who's dying, like their death, their death throes, their, their screams of death and pain and torture. And uh, you know, who knows if it's real? It sounds real. I mean, I don't know if you could get somebody to act out that kind of audio, but it's creepy. You got to watch the whole video. Even if you don't like Alex Jones, you have to watch the video and at least respect the fact that he was able to catch this creepy stuff on camera. And you've got male porn stars that come out and they say what goes on there. And they've said afterwards, you know, that they, you know, they serve as guys like Henry Kissinger. Jones has talked about, uh, you can find it, I'm sure, on his channel somewhere. He's talked about the fact, in fact, he did a video today where he was discussing Bohemian Grove from his cell phone. And um, he even mentioned that when he was in there, he had seen uh, – they, they had posters of Henry Kissinger uh, bearing his rear end. I think he was dressed up like a woman. I mean that doesn't surprise me. This is the kind of stuff that goes on in there. 
And I'm not, I'm not making fun of homosexuals or anything like that. That's I'm not gay bashing. I don't want to hear any of that crap. I'm just saying that this is the kind of stuff that the world elite, these people that tell you how to live your life, this is the kind of depravity that they're up to. And in the same token, you know, <laughs> they're out in the woods getting BJs from male porn stars and worshiping a stone owl, and burning mock effigies of you know humans. Doing mock human sacrifice. We'll be right back. We're going to break. Stay tuned. You did that day. Kill your own citizens to advance your ways. All my world patriots stand up and say 9 11 was an inside job. They lie, they scam, they cheat, and steal. They plot, they fun, they act, it's real. They watch, they hunt, they punish, and kill. Welcome back, guys. Before we went to break, I was playing the uh, the cremation of care ceremony or a, a clip from the ceremony itself. What I didn't get a chance to tell you before the break was what exactly the ceremony is for. Basically, the cremation of care is they're shedding their care about what they do. They're, they're getting rid of the, their care of all the evil crap that they do. So when people say, how do these people sleep at night? Well, that's how they sleep at night. Because they do a old Babylonian ceremony where they get rid of this, you know, their care. They, they, they worship this Babylonian deity and do mock human sacrifices to get rid of their, their feelings about the evil things that they do. So that's how these guys sleep at night. It's, it, there's no words to really describe the things that go on there. I mean, it, I, aside from the, the creepy... Um, uh, and not 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 occult stuff. Uh, the, the the other creepy stuff, you know, the the, the cross dressing, running around, spanking each other, pretend, you know, going by different names, pretending to be other people, you know, all these weird, you know, like transsexual, you know, cross dressing sex parties they have, uh, and then they mix it in with their Luciferian, you know, uh, aside from worshiping Molech, remember these people are Luciferian, so they they have all their other little ceremonies and rituals and weird things that they do there and they're hiding themselves deep in the redwood forest so it's just a very creepy setting to begin with you know this is the one time i wish jason Voorhees would come out of the woods with his hockey mask and his machete and start going to town because you know you could shoot jason and he doesn't die so they wouldn't stand a chance right anyway that was a little joke people what do you say we call cnn call the tip line here and let's see if they want to do a story about the Bohemian Grove. Let's see if we can get her to at least look it up. And I have to give credit where credit is due. We tried this on Bob Tuscan's show earlier, and there were some technical difficulties with uh, CNN's line, so we had to work it out. But I think we might be able to get this done, so let's see. Let's call them up right now. Thank you for calling CNN, the world's leading 24-hour news network. If you are calling with... You have reached the CNN News Tip Hotline. Please be advised that any non-news tip call to this hotline will be disconnected in order to keep this line free for news tips and breaking news. To speak with our news tip team now, please press 1. If you selected this option in error, please press the... Power all calls are monitored and recorded for quality assurance. Thank you for calling, and please hold. Calls are answered in the order in which they are received. CNN, what is your breaking news tip? Hi, my name is George Prouty. I'm with the South Florida News Network. We're a small investigative uh, journalist, newspaper, and uh, website. And um, I just wanted to give you guys a news tip that I just noticed that nobody was talking about it's have you ever heard of the bohemian grove uh yes yes 
uh, it's like a two week a two week retreat of the world's like uber elite. All these politicians from all over the world they they meet at like this this retreat in the woods, this like getaway camp or something they have, and they they mm-hmm. they set like that's where they they set policy and stuff. Um, I, I, right. I, I assume you've heard of that, right? Correct. Okay, uh, mm-hmm. you know like Henry Kissinger and uh, the president himself is rumored to uh, going to be showing up there, as well as the president of Australia. And, uh, I mean, it, this goes back to, like, the, the late 1800s, and they do um, some kind of weird ceremonies that, where they worship a, a large 45-foot stone owl, which is a little creepy because this is the world's leaders. So I was hoping maybe if I brought this to you guys' attention, you guys, you know, being, you know, CNN, you guys, you know, could, could bring some power to it. I was hoping maybe you guys could give it some, some life and show the, the world what's going on. Okay, well, we'll definitely um, take a look into it and uh, make sure that that is something that's on our radar. Yeah, because I mean, it's it's very important. You know, it's again, you know, these these politicians, the heads of the countries, meeting at some weird camp in the woods where they do mock human sacrifices. That's kind of creepy. So, if you guys could definitely, I mean, you have some really excellent investigative journalists there. So, if you guys could have them, you know look into that that would be awesome all right well thank you so much we appreciate your call sir thank you okay bye-bye well there you go people and yes although it makes for excellent radio i doubt that that woman is going to actually put any more effort into it than just that i find it kind of interesting how she actually admitted on air or i mean sure she didn't know she was on air but admitted to me right off the bat that uh she uh, knew about the Bohemian Grove, and she didn't really bat an eye and say anything, uh, you know, blow me off like normally they would when I was talking about the set, the, the human sacrifices and everything else. So I wonder how many people have called them up in the past couple of days. <laughs> and if you guys are out there that are doing it and you're, you hear this broadcast, keep doing it. You know, I hope you, anybody listening and or hears the rebroadcast or sees the video on YouTube, you know, I hope you get inspired. Call CNN, call Fox News, do the same thing we did with the Bilderberg group. You know, call them up and say, hey, there's these elite scumbags meeting in the woods. They're setting policy. And while they're setting policy, they happen to be doing mock human sacrifices. That's a little creepy. OK, you think maybe just maybe we can you know, investigate this a little bit. And that's why I added that little bit of sarcastic humor at the uh, end there. And I said, uh, hey, um, you know, you guys have such great investigative journalists. You know, hopefully they'll get involved and jump on it. Of course, they're not going to jump on it. Anderson Cooper is a Vanderbilt. And the the Vanderbilts related to the, they come from the Astor fortune. <sighs> he, uh, He's part of the problem. He's former CIA. So, yeah, I don't I, – I trust that Cooper's probably actually been to Bohemian Grove and just never reported on it. I mean he does have that look to him. He's got that, that perfect pretty boy face and that, that Ken doll haircut. So maybe he's been an attendee at the Grove uh, like um, – what's his name? That moronic rap star that Jay-Z likes, his little protege, Kanye West. He's another one. That's there's people have uh, shown you know more than ample evidence to prove that he's a uh, a uh, a toy as it were at Bohemian Grove. He's a favorite that gets passed around. So you know there's more going on than meets the eye. So it is important for these mainstream media outlets to be bombarded by people. You know, call up. Fox, call up MSNBC, call up all these talk shows, you know, call up Sean Hannity's talk show, harass the crap out of him, you know, call up anybody's talk show, and even into next week, because it goes on for, it's not like a a three or four day event, like, you know, maybe like a five day event, you know, which I think is the longest that the, the Bilderberg group is, this is like a two week event, I believe, it's like two weeks long, and it's obviously everybody's not there for two weeks, they come and they go and everything else, but I think <clears throat> like overall, it, it it's like uh, twelve or fourteen days or something like that. So, uh, you know, we need to bring attention to this. Not only are these people meeting in secret and breaking the Logan Act, just like they would be uh, with the Bilderberg meetings, 
but they're also vi- they're violating you know our civil liberties at- all while doing mock human sacrifices and worshiping Babylonian deities. But I'm not supposed to think that's strange at all. I'm supposed to say it's okay to see little girls getting groped by TSA because that's how you stop terrorism. Well, no, it's not okay, and I'm not going to say it's okay. People are sick. You hear me? You sick bastards. We're coming for you. We'll be right back. Stop befriending me. He was only using me to be friends with the enemy. A presidential terrorist. Ain't that a contradiction? I guess it goes to show the truth. It's stranger than fiction. But they don't even show the truth when soldiers are missing. I'm only trying to show. Hey, it's Popeye from federaljack.com. Don't miss my show, Down the Rabbit Hole, Wednesday and Friday night, 10 p.m. Eastern, on the Orion Park Radio Network. Welcome back, guys. I have one more clip to play for you. It is from when Richard Nixon was in office. Old Tricky Dicky, very paranoid, so we used to have all of his phone calls recorded. And I don't know the I, I don't remember the exact story of how I I did read it and follow up on it when I first found out about this clip. But this clip I found years ago, so. I don't quite remember exactly how it got out, but somebody found it in one of the, the archives of the phone records, and they, they put it on the Internet. That's all I know. And it's Nixon discussing the, Bohemian, the activities that go on at Bohemian Grove during one of his phone calls. Check it out. I'm going to come up in about two seconds here. Let's look at let's let's look at North County US and yeah. You know what's happening in San Francisco is just gone. It's clear over its planet, but it isn't it isn't just down in the ready part of town now, but the upper class in San Francisco is that way. The Bohemian Grove that I attend on time to time. The Easterners and the others have come there. But it is the most fagged goddamn thing you will care to never imagine in San Francisco crowd goes in. There's President Richard Nixon discussing the stuff, and that's just an off-the-cuff remark about the stuff that he saw. That's just an off-the-cuff remark about the stuff that he saw. So you can only imagine what Tricky Dicky is not telling anybody. And like I've said on other shows, I personally believe that Nixon was set up with Watergate because of the things that he knew uh, and uh, certain people's involvement that he knew uh, in the assassination of John F. Kennedy, and he was starting to to protect his own rear end. Uh, Tricky Dicky was trying to request certain information about the Kennedy assassination and everything else, and I just believe that they got nervous with him and they decided to sell him out, and that's what Watergate was all about. But I'd be digressing onto a different topic there. So <clears throat> staying on with the Bohemian Grove, it's just... You should be angry like I am. You should be enraged that the mainstream media doesn't talk about this. I mean, obviously, we know. I I know it kind of it's like oh, like you know old hat by now to say, well, the mainstream media doesn't talk about this. The mainstream media doesn't talk about that. But every day you run into people that repeat what the mainstream media tells you. So it's important to know what they're not talking about, so you can counter that. And this is one major thing that they're not talking about, the fact that there's world leaders, people like Eric Schmidt from Google, you know, uh, and, you know all these sick – you just go look up Bohemian Grove, Google Bohemian Grove attendee list you know, for the past few years. The, this year's attendee list hasn't come out, but I can guarantee you at least half the Bilderberg members are there, if not all of them. You know, maybe I, 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 I'm sure that not everybody in the Bilderberg group uh, attends Bohemian Grove. I'm sure it's only probably like 98 percent of those evil pedophile scumbags that go and, you know, do mock human sacrifices and stuff like that in the woods. But it, they attend. They, they not only do they have their, their you know, weird 
you know, occult rituals and occult not meaning, you know, occult means hidden, but they're occultic, I should say, uh, cryptic, hidden, you know, satanic, Luciferian worshiping ceremonies where they probably do do real human sacrifices in the grove. I have read plenty of stories where people have said that they, they yes, in fact, have witnessed human sacrifice inside the grove um, above and beyond the cremation of care ceremony where they just burn an effigy of a, a person. But if you research ra- ra- uh, satanic ritual abuse, Ted Gunderson worked on this stuff. He covered it uh, extensively. And he proved that there was something when he last time, I think Ted said something uh, when he, you know, this is back in the 90s. And he when he was talking about it, this was something like 3.5 million Satanists inside the United States alone. 3.5 million million Luciferian practicing Satanists. And these people weren't, uh, you know. Jack the crackhead from the alleyway. They were doctors, lawyers, judges, police officers, city council members, mayors, governors, politicians, senators, congressmen, football players, baseball players, TV stars, movie stars, recording stars of all types. Heavily the the country music industry. If you research, interesting little caveat to that. It dovetails into... Um, MK Ultra. Look up Project Monarch. Look up Kathy O'Brien. She talks about the Bohemian Grove. She talks about presidential models. You know, Bohemian Grove comes up in a lot of places, so it would be pretty hard for it to be a quote-unquote fabricated conspiracy theory. You know, or a fabricated myth or lie made up by some kooky guy. It shows up in too much other stuff. Kathy O'Brien, Transformation of America. As my listeners know, many times I tell people, Transformation of America, one of the most important books you need to purchase a physical copy of. Stop depending on the e-books. Stop depending on, you know, I'll get a, an audio book. No, you want to get a physical version of it because you, my friend, when you buy a physical book, are doing more than just buying yourself a book. You are helping to preserve history because with digital media, the history can be changed and rewritten, but with books, it cannot. And that's why you see people on the news media pushing for books to be eradicated and pushed off the shelves and everything else. So please purchase books. When I tell you guys to go get a pen and a piece of paper and write down books that I tell you to go get, go get them. I'm not making any money off of it. I'm not telling you go to a link on federaljack.com that specifically says where Popeye says to buy these books. I, I used to have a widget from Amazon that I used to you know just sell random people's books for them, but I needed the space, so I got rid of it. So it's, that, that should show you I'm not in this for the money. Go to amazon.com or go to Google and look up these books. Go, look, go help out Judith Barry Baker, Lee Oswald's girlfriend. Okay, go help her out and buy her book, Me and Lee. Go to her website, meandlee.com. Buy her book. That's something that once it's out of print, you'll never find it. That's a piece of history that they want you to never know about. Okay, She was working with Oswald and the CIA on a weaponized form of cancer to take out Castro. You notice how all these truth speakers always get sick and die of cancer? Maybe there's a correlation. Hmm. This is the kind of stuff I'm talking about. If I tell you to go buy Fletcher Prouty's books, it's important. Go purchase them. I'm not telling you to buy a DVD or send me money. I'm not asking you to send me a damn dime. I'm asking you to go out and buy the books and, and preserve history because it's, it, it's these texts. Look, you know, we know things from 5,000 years ago because of certain texts that were hidden you know, during book burnings or during the pillaging of certain cities and stuff. They would the one biggest thing that they took was the text, the history, because they understood. They understood that knowledge is power. That's why there's this huge, vast 
uh, effort to wipe knowledge from the planet. That's why they went after the black nobility families going back hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years ago, even thousands of years ago. They went after uh, – what do you, they, they, they were going after the indigenous peoples of the world. You know, they, they, they look what they did to the Taino Indians. They turned they, – that became the, you know, Puerto Rico and Puerto Ricans. Look what they did to you know all the the Bahamian islands. Look what they did to every indigenous people everywhere. The the natives that were here in this country. Look what they did. They they slaughtered them. But why would they do that? Well, there's a reason. There's a method to their madness because these people, these tribes, they held the same knowledge. And the only way to be able to have one up on the entire world is to eliminate that knowledge from mainstream. And only you are the you are the only people that have that knowledge, and that is what makes these scumbags think they're powerful, and that's what gives them their edge. That's it. They're not better than us. They're not supermen. I mean, they're psychotic. You know, they, they differ in many ways. That you know, from you and I, you and I have humanity, and we care about each other. And you know, if if I saw somebody in the street, which I've done plenty of times, if I saw somebody hurt in the street, I would help them. You know, I've held, I held pressure on a girl's wound once uh, for 45 minutes until the paramedics showed up and loaded her into the back of an ambulance and everything else. And I actually, you know, held pressure on her the entire time until they, they left. That's the kind of stuff you do for other people. It's called being a human. We'll be right back. Try to convince myself these several years were not even real. Try to convince myself the media was making this up. But if I wait here, more figures will be waking me up. But instead, I'm in my bed, game over. I ain't even drank nothing, but I got a hangover. First, I was drunk from the lies they were feeding me. Then I sobered up and realized they were mistreating me. I stumbled out my bed and tried my best to gain some sense of it. The reasons for the cover up, the reasons for the censorship. Now I realize that Uncle Sam was not befriending me. Welcome back, guys. Thanks for hanging with me today. This is the final segment of my Friday episode of Down the Rabbit Hole. Coming soon, I don't know when, but uh, we're, we're dealing with some programming stuff. But coming soon down the pike, eventually, uh, we're, we're going to have a really awesome lineup in the 10 to 11 o'clock hour from Monday to Friday with a, uh, all original programming. And coming soon after that, the... Uh, We'll be it'll we'll be taking it from one hour to two hours. But again, you have to get every, all your ducks in a row. And we here at the Orion Talk Radio Network want to make sure that we give you guys quality programming. So, like my drill instructor used to say to me in boot camp, baby steps. So we're getting everything set up. We're we're trying to build you guys the best talk radio network that can be available on the internet for free to the listeners. So I want to thank everybody for tuning in and, you know, hanging out with me on Wednesdays and Fridays and then tuning in on Sundays. This Sunday, tune in. I'll be covering JJ's show, Against the Wall, with my good friend Will Miller, who his show debuts this week uh, at 1 o'clock. Check it out on Saturday, tomorrow. 1 o'clock is Will's show. Check him out. I think you'll really like it. He's a smart kid, and he's got a good head on his shoulders, and he really knows his stuff. He's knowledgeable. He's smart. He's done his research. So, you know, he, and he, you guys really like his show. I give him a thumbs up. I give him my support. He'll be good to go. So check him out tomorrow, 1 o'clock, on the Orion Talk Radio Network right here. It's Eastern Standard Time. All of our shows are Eastern Standard Time, just in case anybody's not sure. Check out our website, the Orion Talk Radio Network. No, wait, I'm screwing that up. I'm sorry. <clears throat> OrionTalkRadio.com. It's really simple. OrionTalkRadio.com. Check it out. All right. Get a pad and a piece of uh, – well, the pad would have the piece of paper. A pen and a pad and uh, get ready because I'm going to give you a list again of some important texts to purchase I, I do this about once a month. I give you guys a list of books, and most of them are the some of the same things that I'll, you'll hear me repeating. Other things might be added, might, newer stuff that I 
you know, I've picked up in my personal collection. But stuff, anything I tell you to read is a book that I've already read cover to cover at least once, if not twice. That's just the way I am. So don't think that I, you know, anybody's, nobody's paying me for this stuff. This just comes from my personal c- collection. So here, here we go. Check this out. One of the, the two first books, and I, I said this the other day, two of the first books that you want to get are JFK by L. Fletcher Prouty. Okay, JFK by L. Fletcher Prouty. The, it's, it says JFK, and then the rest of the title is The CIA Vietnam and the Plot to Assassinate John F. Kennedy. And it's, uh, it, in case you're wondering, you want to make sure you get the right book, it's got a foreword and an introduction by um, Oliver Stone. Next is, it's published by Skyhorse Publishing, by the way. You can check them out at skyhorsepublishing.com. Uh, the next book, published by the same people, Skyhorse, is The Secret Team, again by Fletcher Prouty. Last name is P-R-O-U-T-Y. The next book you want to get is Target Patton, which I did a show on this a couple weeks ago. By Robert K. Wilcox. So the listeners probably know the, the Target Patton show. It was one of my Friday shows a couple weeks ago. Excellent, excellent book. Read it. Great book. Again, Me and Lee by Judith Barry Baker. You can find Judith's website, meandlee.com. The Mysterious Collapse of World Trade Center 7 by David Ray Griffin. Another great book by David R. Griffin is Debunking, 9-11 Debunking. You want to destroy anybody that's read the quote-unquote popular mechanics you know, book and article. You want to de- debunk the moron that goes on – used to go on Glenn Beck's show, the little weasel with glasses. I forget his name. The guy that used to be the editor for Entertainment Weekly. Yeah, him. You want to be able to debunk his crap and tear it apart knowledgeably, and skillfully, and eloquently? Read that book cover to cover. You'll be able to destroy anybody that tries to, you know, debunk, and I'm doing air quotes, 9-11 truth. One book. That's the kind of knowledge that book will impart to you. I'm not kidding. Another great book is Seeds of Destruction. You want to learn what's going on with Monsanto and all this stuff and and, and all this GMO food by uh, F. William Engdahl. You can go get it at uh, globalresearch.ca. Great book. Seeds of Destruction. This book is insane. Okay, it'll blow your mind what they're doing to the food supply. And it, it, you know, Henry Kissinger's quoted in there about using food as a weapon. It's really crazy. A couple Jim Mars books: Rule by Secrecy, Rise of the Fourth Reich, and Crossfire. Crossfire is very important because it's a hard book to get. That's his book about JFK. It's got that book is filled with a ton of information. It's not the only book you should get on JFK. There's a there's another one I don't have. It's called JFK and the Unthinkable. I haven't gotten that one yet, but I, I do want to get it. I just don't have the, the, the currency flow right now to, to purchase anything. Money's a little tight, but um I, I eventually want to get it. It's called JFK and the Unthinkable. Great, great book too. I've already read uh some excerpts from it. It's a great book. Uh let's see, what else here? The Terror Conspiracy, Deception, 9-11, and the Loss of Liberty. That's another Jim Mars book. Crossing the Rubicon by Michael C. Rupert. You'll learn about the Promise software in there and what was going on with 9-11 and everything else. And then you have, again, I've, I've told you this once before, this is one of the most important books to get out of all of them. The Transformation of America. It's self-published by Kathy O'Brien and Mark Phillips, so it's, very, it's the only place you can get it is from them. Um, when you order it, it takes a couple weeks to get it, but it's, it's really worth it. Of course, Bill Cooper's Behold a Pale Horse, just because you should have that to archive that. It's another good book to have. Again, I'm not saying every word. I, I, I agree with every word 100% in that book, but he really has some good information in there about what's going on. Uh, Jim Fetzer's book, American Assassination, The Strange Death of Senator Paul Wellstone. Very, very important. Very, very important. Okay. I've had Jim come on and talk about Wellstone's death before, and Jim's the same guy that's going to be on Sunday doing four hours of JFK with me. But uh, this is incredible, okay? This book, you'll find out they killed Wellstone. It was Cheney and them, his little executive assassination ring. Um, Another good book, some people don't like him. I think he's a good author, David Icke. Check out The Biggest Secret. 
Even if you don't believe everything Ike says in there, it's still a very eye-opening book. And a really good book by James Scott, The Attack on the Liberty, The Untold Story of Israel's Deadly 1967 Assault on a U.S. Spy Ship. Very, very important book to have. There's tons of others. You can also, I suggest also getting The Secret Destiny of America by Manley P. Hall. You can find there's um, copies of it where people have, they they took, um, it's The Secret Destiny of America and then America's Assignment with Destiny. And they put it into one one book and it's got his original drawings and everything. I suggest you get that because Manley P. Hall was made a quote unquote um, honorary Mason. He was kind of like um, their... uh, their little secretary, if you will, and he, he was – or their, their historian, and he chronicled a lot of stuff, and he was privy to a lot of information. They made him an honorary mason. So obviously he, he was not some fly-by-night schmuck. So I, I suggest you check it out. Just look up The Secret Destiny of America by Manley P. Hall. His name is M-A-N-L-Y P period Hall, H-A-L-L. And another good book to get, it's, it's kind of like a time capsule, is None Dare Call It Conspiracy by Gary Allen. And Gary Allen is not with us anymore, but his book is really interesting because it was written back in the 60s. And when you read it now, it's really creepy because almost – I mean everything that he lays out about what they were going to do, and it's not even almost everything, how he says they're going to – you know advance the you know the world government and they're going to try to destroy the sovereignty and how they're going to do it and you know future wars and what you know the excuses they're going to use and what it could lead to and this and that and everything he hit the nail on the head and this is written back in the 60s so it's important to have these books it's important to have this stuff and not in it in an ebook format, it's important to have it in a physical format because if they lit off an EMP blast and not every, you know, nobody has their stuff in a in a lead lined vault, there goes all the information, and then they could turn around and just try to rewrite stuff. So it's important to have these physical texts. I have books that are two, three hundred years old. A good friend of mine who um, uh, Jack uh, Jack Blood has interviewed uh, Steve. <clears throat> he's a a, uh, an author, Steve Alton, he, he's written a bunch of books. And I, I sent him as a gift a book that I had. Uh, it was a little over 200 years old. You know, it's, it, it, to me, that's the best gift you could give to somebody. That's the best thing you could do is impart a piece of knowledge to somebody. You know, everybody, you know, most guys like cars and everything else. And I, 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 I like a few things. I, I, I like a nice looking car or whatever. But my, my collector thing is I like books because to me, knowledge is power. This is Sparta! Thanks for hanging out, guys. I hope you took notes. I'll see you on Sunday starting at 3 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 4 hour. JFK episode with Jim Fetzer and Will Miller. And check out Will's show tomorrow. I'm out.